We learned at the beginning of these notes that the aqueous compounds don't really stay together as you see them above. They dissolve in water. And what dissolving in water means is that they're going to separate into their respective ions. So the above reaction breaks down into what we call a complete ionic equation. We're going to show all of the ions that participate in this reaction. So what you're going to do, I think it helps if you kind of say what the chemicals are called out loud, at least in your brain. So this first chemical here, the name of this guy is called sodium phosphate. So what that means is when we're going to, when we put this guy in water, it's going to break up into sodium ions and phosphate ions. So here's what a sodium ion is, right? Na with a plus one charge. That's a sodium ion. And PO4 with a minus three charge is a phosphate ion. You could write it as PO4 three minus or PO4 minus three. The order of the minus and the number or the plus and the number doesn't matter. So this Na3PO4 breaks up into sodium ions and phosphate ions. If they're ions, they have a charge, right? It's, we're doing a complete ionic equation. So we can't just say Na and that's all. We have to say what the charge on that sodium ion is. Now, what about these numbers, the six and the two? Well, the six comes from, we wanna know how many sodium ions are there. We have this big two out front with this little three, a total of six. Some people, when they first start doing net ionic equations, a common mistake is that people will look right at like this. They know to split it up, but what they'll do is say Na little three plus one. Well, if I asked you to draw me what a sodium ion looks like at the particle level, you would probably draw me a little circle like this, right? There's a sodium ion. Na little three, when you have little numbers, that implies that you have multiple dots stuck together. Here's what Na three would look like at the particle level. Three dots attached to one another. And that's not what it means to be aqueous. Aqueous means break it up. And this isn't broken up, right? There's three dots that are stuck together. So when we break it up, what you need to say is, what am I breaking it up into? Sodium ions. So in your head, when you hear sodium ion, you should just be picturing one little dot of a sodium ion, right? We happen to have six of them. So your first say, what are the pieces that this compound is made up of? It's made up of a sodium ion piece and a phosphate ion piece. Then you go back and fill in the numbers in front of it to say how many of each piece there are. Another common mistake people make is they know to break it up. So sometimes people take that phosphate and they'll say, okay, it's gonna break up into a P and phosphorus has a minus three charge and it's gonna break up into O with a minus two charge and there's two phosphate ions and there's eight oxide ions. That also doesn't happen. That's a no. That doesn't happen either because I said before, it might be helpful to kind of say in your head, what is this chemical called? It breaks up into its ions. So we call this sodium phosphate, right? So we're gonna keep the phosphate together. We're not gonna break up that phosphate into phosphorus, phosphide, and oxide ions. Let's go to the next chemical, copper two sulfate. So if we kinda in our head picture this guy, we'd say, what are the components that make that up? We have a copper ion and I have sulfate ions. So what's a copper ion? Cu with a plus two charge. We can't just say Cu, we need the charge there because we're doing 
a complete ionic equation, show all the ions involved. The other ion that's involved is a sulfate ion. We do not break that up into sulfur and oxygen. We're breaking up copper two sulfate into a copper plus two ion and a sulfate ion. So a sulfate ion is SO4 with a minus two charge. Then we go back and fill in the blanks of how many of each of those pieces do you have? I have three coppers and three sulfates. Next up is our product side, the sodium sulfate. So sodium sulfate is going to break up into sodium ions and sulfate ions. So you ask yourself, what's a sodium ion? Oh, it's Na with a plus one charge. What's a sulfate ion? SO4 with a minus two charge. Then you say how many of each piece you have. We have six sodiums and we have three sulfates, six and three. Our last piece is our Cu3PO42, solid. Now you'll notice, and this is important, maybe I'll switch colors here. Our Cu3PO42 solid looks exactly the same in the next line. The reason why we keep them exactly the same is because our copper 2 phosphate is a solid. And if you're really understanding what's going on here, what we're showing is all these aqueous ones, it's a little misleading to show it as Na3PO4 together and CuSO4 together and Na2SO4 together because that's not what aqueous means, right? Aqueous means dissolved in water, and when things dissolve in water, the water pulls apart the cation and the anion so they're not together anymore. So when we write it like this, we're showing you what it really looks like at the particle level. Well, water does not rip apart copper 2 phosphate. Copper 2 phosphate is insoluble in water. It doesn't dissolve. And so that's what this part was all about. Leave the non-aqueous ones, solids, liquids, and gases alone. They don't dissolve in water don't ionize, so therefore there's no reason to split them up. So your solids, liquids, and gases, you're going to leave alone. They'll look exactly the same from one line to the next.